Today, we're going to see what we can make with the so-called God Metal as we review and teach you how to play Ori Calcum. Ori Calcum is a fun game with a fair few bells and whistles, and it's not too complicated to teach, but there is a lot that you have to know going in. You're going to start by setting up your player board, the action board, the construction tiles, and all of the monster tiles. Place the dice, the bags, the hoplites, the orichalcum, titans, terrain tiles, and all of the extra tiles for the construction board within reach of everybody. Randomly determine who's going to go first, and the person immediately to their right gets one extra hoplite. You can see there, one extra hoplite. Each player starts with their metropolitan tile and one hoplite and one orichalcum, except the exception, like I said, one extra for directly to the right of the first player. The object of the game is to obtain five victory points. You can see these victory points slot in right here. They can come in different forms. Titans count as one victory point. Temples count as one victory point. They are on the opposite sides of these. Medallions count as one victory point. And as soon as that fifth victory point is gained by any player, then the game ends. Now that we understand what our goal is, how are we going to get there? The main conceit of Orichalcum is you're going to be taking these terrain tiles, placing them onto your islands, building buildings on them, maybe fighting monsters, and trying to lure these titans by having sets of three like terrains. Round, the players are going to take turns drawing action cards with specific terrains and sometimes monsters on them, taking the corresponding action and taking the card and placing the tile for the terrain type that is on the card somewhere onto your board. In this case, say we're going to take this one here. This has a monster on it. It also has the recruitment action, which allows you to recruit hoplites. So in this case, let's say we want to put it here. It needs to be placed adjacent to your existing tiles. The monster stays on the volcano. And then we take this action here. This allows us to recruit from our recruitment stations. Our metropolitan tile automatically starts with one recruitment and one mine. So we're going to recruit a hoplite. If we have nothing else that we want to do right now, then we are able to stop our turn. Say we don't want to stop our turn. We do have the option, since we have two hoplites, to do what's on the board here. Discard two hoplites to perform any of these extra actions. In this case, we might want to combat. So if we want to fight that monster, what we'd have to do is take one of the die. Since we don't have any hoplites to dedicate, and I'll talk about combat in a minute, we'd be rolling one die and trying to beat a six. In this case, we would have to roll the skull which represents the six the skull is an automatic kill so if you're rolling multiple die as long as you get one skull it's an automatic kill either than that you're going to be adding up the numbers on your die so in this case we did not kill the minotaur after the turn these action cards will slide down why is this important because it allows more to come into the free sections here in the case of these here, you actually have to pay a hoplite or two hoplites in order to pick those cards when they're still in those spaces. So you want to try and pick these if you're low on resources. In a two-player game and only in a two-player game, one of the action cards is going to get discarded by the player that just picked, and then the other player will be able to pick their action card and then discard one of the action cards. In every other version, if you're playing with more than two players, the Players will pick until everybody has picked an action card. The remaining action cards will slide all the way down, and then new action cards will be dealt out with new terrain tiles, new actions, and new monsters, potentially. What determines if there's a monster? Well, a monster is determined by whether or not there's a volcano. So in this case, we see there's a volcano, and that means whenever it comes out, you got to put a monster on it. Just like in this one with the Minotaur, there was a volcano. So what are some other aspects that you can get from these terrain tiles? Let's turn this around. Say we had it like this instead. Have our minotaur there. And the game is played for a little while. And we have put out some more terrain tiles here. So if we have a grouping 
of three of the same terrain, not including wilds, because you cannot include wilds when luring titans, you gain one of the titans matching that terrain. Here we have Kronos, which is the desert terrain. He would go into this little spot here. We're a little jammed on this board, but he would go into this little cutout and he counts as one victory point. He also has a special ability. When you're doing the attack action, you can use him to automatically kill one monster. He then flips over and goes inactive. He still counts as a victory point. If you were to expand this desert at all, while you have him inactive, he flips back over and you can use his ability again. Since combat is the first one that we've talked about outside of the recruitment action, let's go into a little bit more detail on it. So combat is gonna be using the die here. They are one through six die, the six being represented by a skull. If you have a roster of hoplites in your little encampment after you've recruited, you are able to allocate hoplites to fight a monster in this case we're going to put one hoplite that allows us to take our automatic one die and add an additional die to it we roll we get snake eyes and we actually lose but in most cases if you're facing a lower end monster you're probably going to win with two die but so here so we got to six which is just enough to kill the minotaur minotaur gets killed it goes into your supply and in the case of the Minotaur, it actually has a special reward that you get is you get to draw a building. So what you would do is you would go into the little bag here, which, and this dies, by the way, it goes back into the general supply and reach in, grab a building. So we have a recruitment station and we can put it on any available space. We're going to put it here on the volcano. So now we have an extra recruitment station. Some other monsters would have Orichalcum as a reward. Some of them will have other things. Some of them will be able to lure Titans when you beat them, like the Hydras will lure Titans. So that's pretty much combat. If you fail in combat and you have dedicated a Hoplite, the Hoplite stays with the monster until you're able to defeat it. And if you have multiple monsters on your board, you don't necessarily have to fight all of them each turn you have them but if you've built up some onto your board you do get the opportunity with one combat action to try and run through all of them until you lose so it's recommended you start with the easier ones and then move on to the harder ones because you do want to clear out those monsters eventually you need to be able to have a clear island with five victory points to win but you also are not able to build in most scenarios adjacent to a monster so that's temples or buildings now that we've discussed building, let's move on to the construction action. That is this little green action with the hammer here. And that is done in several different ways. You have a couple of options here. If you have a matching terrain to one of the buildings here that you're able to build on, you can choose to build one of the buildings on the construction board. So in this case, we have a recruitment station that is on the desert. We have an available desert. So let's place the recruitment station there. There was a hoplite on it automatically when it comes out of the bag. So that goes into our supply. Those construction will be replaced at the end of the round. Say we have a slightly different arrangement of tiles here where we're able to build a temple. So how do you build a temple? Let's go through here, find some pieces to build a temple. So say our board looks like this. Well, we can't do that. But say our board looks like, uh, make it easy for me here. Okay, well, let's just say it was like this, even though that's off the board. But so we had four spaces here, including this wild. We have to be able to place temples onto four different terrain types. So in this case, we have our wild, we have forest, we have desert, and we have water. So we put the temple right there in that little four spot. And then that gives us, a temple token the temple token will count as one victory point so that is another option that you have for being able to build or use the construction action the last option that you have is being able to make a medallion this you would trade in 
five of these Ori Calcum nuggets. And once you have five, you trade them straight in, build a medallion, and that medallion goes right here and counts as one victory point. The last action that you're able to perform is the mining action. So you can see right here, it is this yellow action here. This allows you to gain Ori Calcum based on the amount of mines you have. So if you have a mine, you would be able to take one Ori Calcum nugget from the general supply for each mine and put it into your supply. It's nice and simple, not a lot of bells and whistles to that one. Throughout the game, it is divided in turns and rounds. Turns are for each player, rounds are for each group of players, and each turn is broken down into five sections. Your first section is you select an action card. We went over that. Your second is to place the terrain tile, so we went over that as well. Take the terrain tile that is on your action card and place it onto your board. Resolve the action card. So that would be to take the action that is on the actual action card. So in this case, when we took that first one, we took the recruit action. This is optional, you do not have to take it. Then the fourth is perform an additional action. So we discussed that when we paid the two hoplites in order to fight the monster that we had on the board. And five is only with two players like we discussed and that is to discard an additional action card from the action track. You're going to go through turn by turn, round by round, until someone has five victory points on the top of their board and no monsters on their island. That person is declared the winner. Now that you know how to play, I'm going to meet you back up top and give you my final thoughts. Now that you know how to play the game, I'm going to go over my thoughts on this game. I like this game because I feel like there is a lot that you can do with it. You are having to make choices on where your terrain is going to be placed. You're having to make choices on which Titans you're going to go for, which buildings you might want to build, and even some of the buildings that you think might not be as useful end up potentially being useful in the later game. And you might have to kind of plan for that later game early on to make sure that you're putting yourself in the best position to win towards the end. You can go and gather more of the Ori Calcum. You can kind of set yourself up to be able to build a lot of temples and get the temple coins. And I think there's enough variance in the ways that you can kind of get points that it keeps it interesting. This was not the game that I was primarily demoing when I was working for Pandastorus, but uh, I was watching a lot of people play this game and they were having a really good time. And I've had a chance to play it several times since then. And it's just a game that's got a lot of replayability to it and is something that I like the theming. The The artwork is kind of generic, but it, it's, got, it's got its own special charm to it. The, the theme is not necessarily just layered on top, though you could somewhat make this into a different theme, but I think it's tied in enough in the game where I don't think it's just slapped on top. And there is enough kind of crunchiness to it where it can appeal to a lot of different levels of gamers. The one thing I do wish that this game had is a bigger board. I feel like you use up your board with your terrain really quickly and it doesn't allow you to do all the things you want to do. But I know that's part of the point of the game is you kind of have to make those early decisions count because you're not going to have a lot of room on your board to be able to kind of make up for those misplaced terrains later on. So Overall, I really like this game, and if you really like this content, then please like this video. Leave a comment down below. Have you played this game before? What other kind of Greek-inspired games have you played, and what are your favorites? Let me know. Maybe we'll take a look at them. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of this content going forward, and ring that bell so you know what's up, and I'll catch you in the next one.